In this lesson, we will complete our study of firm behavior by deriving the firm's short-run and long-run supply curves. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the market environment that perfectly competitive firms face, derive a firm's short-run and long-run supply curves, and analyze the effects of alternative government policies on a firm's choices. When we analyze a firm's supply choice, we have to consider the market environment in which the firm operates. We will start off with the simplest case from an analytical perspective, which is a perfectly competitive market. In a perfectly competitive market, there are many small firms that produce a similar or identical product. Because there are many small firms, no firm can produce enough output to be able to change the market price. Because no firm is large enough to affect the market price, we say that firms in perfectly competitive markets are price takers. Thus, the only decision the firm has to make is how much output to produce in order to maximize its profits. Let's now consider the firm's output decision. We will call the amount of output the firm produces Y. Since a firm in a competitive market cannot choose the price it charges for its output, the firm's revenues are the price per unit of output times the number of units of output it produces, or P times Y. Generically, the firm's costs are a function, which we will call C of Y. Thus, the firm's profits are its revenues minus its costs, or P times Y minus C of Y. The firm's objective is to choose the amount of Y to produce to maximize its profits. To solve for the firm's profit maximizing level of output, we should simply take the derivative of the profit function with respect to output, set the derivative equal to zero, and solve for y. When we do this, we find that at the optimal level of output, the market price for the firm's output equals the firm's marginal cost of that unit. The market price is the firm's marginal benefit for each unit of output since the firm gets P dollars of revenue for each unit that it produces. The marginal cost is the additional cost to the firm of producing the last unit of output. Thus, the firm's profit maximization rule to produce output until the market price is equal to the marginal cost is another example of the marginal benefit marginal cost rule that you learned about in introductory economics. Is there ever a time when the firm should not produce where price equals marginal cost? The answer is yes. There are two cases to consider, the short run case and the long run case. We will start by considering the short run case when the firm has fixed costs. This means that even if the firm produces zero units of output, it still has to pay some costs. If the firm produces zero output, it will have zero revenue. If it has zero revenue but positive costs due to its fixed costs, then its profits will be negative. Should the firm still produce output if its profits will be negative? Sometimes the answer to this question is yes. Let's consider a stereotypical firm with stereotypical cost curves. Suppose that the market price is less than the firm's per unit costs as measured by the average total cost curve, but is high enough to cover the firm's per unit variable costs. At this point, the firm has two options. Option one is to produce where price equals marginal cost, which corresponds to output level Y star in the graph. Option two is to produce zero units of output. Which option is better for the firm? If the firm produces Y star, then its profits are P times Y star minus its costs, which are its per unit costs or average total costs multiplied by the number of units of output or Y star. At option two, its profits will be its revenues, which are zero, minus its fixed costs, which are its average fixed cost times output. To see which option is better, it helps to split the firm's total costs into its fixed and variable costs. We can, when we do this, we can see that at the price P, the firm has enough revenue to cover its per unit variable costs, since at output Y star, price is greater than average variable costs. In addition, the firm has some money left over to partially pay for its fixed costs. 
the amount that it has less left over to cover its fixed costs will be the different the distance between the price and average variable cost multiplied by y star this amount is represented by the yellow box in this diagram. Since the firm can pay all of its variable costs and some of its fixed costs, we know that its profits at option one, although negative, will be greater than its profits at option two. So the best option for a firm in this situation will be to continue to produce a positive level of output, at least in the short run. Let's consider a second case in which the market price is less than the firm's average variable costs. As before, the firm has two options. One is to produce a positive level of output where the market price is just equal to the firm's marginal costs. And the other option is to produce nothing. The firm's profits at each option are the same as before. However, if we decompose the firm's cost at option one into its fixed and variable costs, we now see that the firm does not have enough revenues to pay for all of its variable costs. Therefore, the firm will be losing not only all of its fixed costs, but some of its variable costs as well. In this case, the firm's profits are actually higher from option two, and the firm should produce nothing, even in the short run. This thought exercise has led us to the firm's short-run profit maximization rule, which is, in the short run, the firm should produce where price equals marginal cost, as long as the market price is above the minimum of average variable cost. If the market price is less than the minimum of average variable cost, the firm should produce zero output in the short run. We can now characterize the firm's short-run supply function. Mathematically, the function will be described by the equation price equals marginal cost, where marginal cost is a function of output. Technically, this function is an inverse supply function, since it describes price as a function of output. To find the supply function, solve this equation for output as a function of price. Graphically, since the firm chooses its output level by setting price, equal to marginal cost for any price above the minimum of average variable cost, the firm's short-run supply curve is simply the portion of its marginal cost curve that is above the minimum of average variable cost. This curve tells you how much output the firm will produce at a given price, which is the definition of a supply curve. Let's consider an example of how to find and graph a firm's supply curve from a specific cost function. Suppose that a firm's short-run costs are 10y cubed plus 5y plus 1,000. To find the formula for the supply function, first, find the firm's marginal costs. In this case, the firm's marginal costs are equal to 30 times y squared plus 5. Then, set the market price equal to marginal cost. This is the equation for the firm's inverse supply function, since it describes price as a function of output. To find the supply function, solve for output as a function of price. When we do that, we find that the equation for the supply function is y equals the square root of price minus 5 divided by 30. We can now graph both the short-run supply function and the short-run inverse supply function. Note that if we put price on the vertical axis and output on the horizontal axis, we are graphing the inverse supply curve. If we reverse the axes, we are graphing the supply curve. We know that the inverse supply curve is the portion of the marginal cost curve above the minimum of average variable cost. So we can start graphing the inverse supply curve by graphing the marginal, supply, marginal cost curve. Note that in the case of these cost functions, both the marginal cost and average variable cost functions are parabolas whose minimum value occurs at an output of zero and a price of five. Thus, the firm's inverse supply curve is the portion of the marginal cost curve that is to the right of the vertical axis. For the supply curve, we want to graph quantity supplied as a function of price, which we found was the square root of p minus five over 30. Note that this function will only be valid for prices greater than 5. In the long run, 
The firm has no fixed inputs. This means that it has no fixed costs, and if it produces zero output, it will have zero costs and hence zero profit. Therefore, in the long run, producing positive out if producing positive output will cause a firm to lose money, the optimal thing for it to do is produce zero output. In the long run, the firm will be losing money at any price that is below the minimum of average total cost. Thus, the firm will be willing to produce a positive amount of output as long as the market price is greater than the minimum of average total cost, and the firm's long-run supply curve will be the portion of its marginal cost curve that is above the minimum of average total cost. To analyze the effects of government policies on a firm's supply decisions, ask yourself two questions. First, what will be the effect of the policy on the firm's costs? Note that if the policy has an effect on the market for one or more of the inputs that the firm uses, then in all likelihood the policy will have an effect on the firm's cost. The second question to ask yourself is, what is the effect of the policy on the market price of the firm's product? Once you have answered these questions, you will be able to analyze whether the firm will be willing to increase its supply, decrease its supply, or leave its supply unchanged as a result of the policy. This concludes this lesson on firm supply. In class, you will have the chance to derive and analyze a firm's supply decisions under different cost scenarios.